This is Joyce, the voice of Joyce. I'm going to be conducting two interviews this week for episode 46. One will be political and it'll be my thoughts on what's happening in America. And the second one will be fun with Frederick, my teacher of Feldenkrais. I think Feldenkrais has been an amazing journey for me. It's helped me to overcome many, many uh, obstacles in movement and in inhibitions. I feel like I am on a journey uh, that has not ended. But I'll let Frederick discuss it with you. Evidently, doing something new is good for me, it's good for Frederick, it's good for all of us. So tune in and I hope you'll enjoy my interview with Frederick about his upcoming Feldenkrais Festival. That's where I met him in May. So join us and have a really lovely time digging into our awareness and how aware you can feel about how you move in space and through life. Thank you. Frederick will be with us in a moment. I would like to introduce my, my uh, friend, mentor, teacher, Frederick of uh, Feldenkrais. And uh, he has some amazing uh, information to tell us about the next Feldenkrais Awareness Festival. And if you want to discuss jazz also, that's coming up this uh, Friday. Uh, you're more than welcome. Uh, I've registered for the festival and I'd love you to speak about it. Sure, thank you very much, Joyce. I, um, I would love to have uh, as many people as possible uh, join us for the festival, the Feldenkrais Festival. Uh, I guess you registered at feldenkraisfestival.com, is that right? Is that where you are? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so everyone can do that. Um, one of the silver linings of the, uh, of the current time is that we have no space limitations and um, we can have as many people as we, as, as many people as there are devices who have access to the internet, that's as many people as we can accommodate, which is a wonderful thing. And, uh, <laughs> so I'm, and also another thing is uh, I've been doing the Feldenkrais festivals now for maybe about, maybe about 10 years. And uh, I've always uh, had to find a venue. I had to find a physical location. Now that it's moved online, I no longer have that issue. I also don't have the issue of having to pay for rent. So um, I get to bring in teachers from all over. Uh, I don't have to cover their transportation or hotel costs. I just have them sign in on Zoom. And uh, I don't have to pay for the venue. And uh, so it makes things a whole lot easier I'm finding that Feldenkrais method uh, actually works a whole lot better on Zoom than it does on where you need to go to a venue and, uh, and, and participate there. I find that with Zoom, I can teach you in your home or I can have teachers, I can plug in a teacher in another city and they uh, can come, uh, come to your home and, uh, and you, as you can do in the, current, in the coming festival, you can take classes with teachers literally all over the country uh, who are going to be on on different times and some of hand-picked teachers uh, that I've, I've chosen. And it's, it's gonna be a blast, I'm really excited. And you're right, it, it has alleviated, you know, it, it's created stress in some areas because you can get zoomed out. But in other areas, when you're concentrating, say on Feldenkrais, it's wonderful because you really feel 
it's a one-to-one -one relationship from from my you know side of it as 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 the student uh it, it's a really great venue because you're not aware of the other people it's uh, yeah it is strange that there are many people who are now taking class who i have a more intimate relationship with than i would if they uh, if I were in the classroom with them. There's something very direct and very positive about having the, the person on screen directly in front of me that's different than being in a room. And I think also you as a participant in the class have a richer experience because you're in your own home. You're in an environment, you are in an environment that you control. So uh, I think that's very, that's important. And uh, so I'm loving it. Uh, many teachers of the Feldenkrais method that I, I know um, are telling me that their classes have gotten much larger, um, that they used to have smaller classes. Now more people are attending. Part of that is the ease of attending. All you need to do is turn on your computer and input the link. Uh, but uh, part of that is that. But part of it, I think, is an intimacy that happens in the interaction. That you're in your house, I'm here, I'm watching you, and that it, it, it's, very, it's very direct, very, almost like everybody else disappears. I, I think so. And then the good thing is, uh, unlike other uh, exercises of any, or, or methodologies, this one really protects you from hurting yourself. So that it, it, it's enough movement that you're aware of what you're doing. Your brain, in fact, has to readjust uh, to uh, different asymmetries, but you can control your level of activity. Yes. Um, in fact, I, I noticed you rephrase, you said uh, exercise or methodologies. It's interesting, like, where do we put the work that we do? Normally, uh, in, in, uh, in an exercise format, we'd be doing strength training where we're overloading what we're doing. We're overloading our strength system. Or we're doing cardiovascular training where we get our heart rate up and it's higher than what we would ordinarily do. That's how we get better. Similarly, when we stretch, we take the two ends of the muscle and we pull them apart and do more than we ordinarily would do. As you know, in a Feldenkrais lesson, we don't do any of those things. We look at how we're doing what we're doing. So we really stay very safe if we honor our sensation. If we think, okay, this is what feels good. This is the, sp this is the range that makes sense for me. Then our brain gets to redistribute how we do that. How much we recruit of this or how much we recruit of that. Of that. I took a lesson last night from one of my favorite teachers who's in Israel. Here I am in New York and she's in Israel. <laughs> and she, she spoke uh, about how to give the boss a vacation. If you have a particular muscle that feels like it must be in control of everything, how about if you give that particular muscle that feels it has to rule everything, if you let it go on vacation and let our natural inclinations take over and we see that when the boss is on vacation, the business or the entity still goes on. And uh, so we almost have a vacation within ourselves and we learn to have a, a, loving, a much more loving uh, and powerful relationship as opposed to being overly dependent on this area or that area as we move. So it's a, it's a magnificent method and uh, I, I'm, I'm enjoying how people of all types, you see who's in class. We, yeah. have, we have a youngster who's a pianist who is in his teens, I think, late teens. And then we have people who are well into their 90s taking class. That's amazing to me. And everyone's having, a, having their own great experience. And they look wonderful, actually. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> they really do. Yeah, that, that is quite fabulous. Uh, those of us who want to have a, have, a, have a vital older age, hello, I'll sign up. Yeah, uh, <laughs> we want the last you know, few decades of our lives to be ones where we are empowered in the best sense of the word. I think that this is the best. The you know, last time we had a thousand people, which was amazing, and uh, did and, you really? 
we had a thousand people, over a thousand people, I think a thousand five, sign in to take classes. Uh, this week uh, it's going to be uh, this time it's uh, from the 22nd through the 27th so squinched in between the major Jewish holidays of uh, Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur and um, uh, several classes a day uh, as I mentioned we've got some amazing people really a lineup that is out of this world out of this world I'm excited I'm excited to take classes and uh, we're going to do different formats where we do uh, combination teaching We'll have some lessons in chairs, some lessons about breathing. Most of the lessons are on the floor. Um, so yes, uh, I, look, I look forward to seeing everybody on the mat or in their chair or wherever they might be. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I'm looking forward to it also uh, because I find it's totally stress reduction. Mm -hmm. uh, for me. So not only do I walk better and feel better, but I also have less stress. <laughs> so I think that that's a good thing in this time. Absolutely. I think it's a good thing all the time. All uh, the time. Yeah. Also, I should mention that um, it's the LGBTQA. Um, and LGBT, I think everyone's familiar with those uh, letters and what they stand for in the acronym. Um, uh, a stands for allies meaning anybody who is open to and um, yeah, open to being in an environment that is LGBT empowering for uh, those of us who are lesbian, bisexual, gay, transgender, I have to remember <laughs> those things. Um, and and uh, in the elder community where I do a service project, I do a service project at an LGBT elder center and they have been incredibly supportive in this and uh, this uh, event attracts people from all over, including places where LGBT elders are, are turned away from um, having access to being full citizens wherever they are. Uh, it was uh, amazing to see people in places like Oklahoma or in, in, in rural places in other countries, in fact, uh, finding that, oh my gosh, there's an environment where I can go that, that's LGBT positive where I am supported and that um, whoever the teachers may be, whatever the reality of their life, they are, they are supportive uh, of people who are LGBT, which is uh, really quite amazing. Uh, you know, the, and everyone's invited regardless of romantic preference or gender identity. But if someone is transgender or somebody has a, is a member of a minority sexuality, um, they are very much invited. And of course, everybody else is invited too. Right, I'm, right. It, yeah. it's, it's an open tent. It's all yeah, inclusive. It, it, yeah, it's an open tent for those who want to be in an open tent. That's what it is. Right, yeah. right, right. You want, if you want to join, it, it's open. And the only thing that you're, that you're really doing is uh, making yourself aware of how you move. Exactly. That's what it's about. <laughs> yeah. That's really what it's all about. It's it, it's food for your body and your brain. <laughs> yeah, I particularly wanted to do this for um, for transgender people and also for people in the senior community because um, m many many seniors find that there are no. Um, well, you mentioned exercise or methodologies. There are very, very few methodologies that work so well for people who are over 60. Most gym environments just don't have, uh, have options like that. I was really impressed when I was in Asia, um, traveling around and seeing that people over 60, like myself, don't disappear. <laughs> We're actually revered. <laughs> and, That's right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and when I uh, w looked out my window my first morning in Hong Kong, I saw lots of older people along the waterfront doing a, a qigong that uh, I recognized. And I said, oh my gosh, I'll never have a chance to do that again. So I got me elevator and went downstairs and I ended up doing a fabulous, I suppose, soaring crane qigong on the water. I, I'm six foot three, as you know, six foot three, about 250 pounds. So I was a lot bigger than most of the, the, the people who were standing on the waterfront in, in Hong Kong, but uh, I felt like I blended in beautifully. Uh, certainly in the age group, I, w I was great, yeah. 
<laughs> but, you know, which reminds me, when I was in Israel a couple of years ago, in Tel Aviv, I was walking with my grandson and we came across a playground. And then when we got up close, we realized it wasn't for children. It was for adults. And they had all kinds of devices where you could move your arms, your legs, different muscles. Uh, and there it was, strictly, really, for adults. That's amazing. That is amazing. Um, yeah, we, I, I think here in, well, I live in New York, as do you, there's an ageism here that is a bit outrageous. You know, why don't we have something like that? I think uh, it reminds me of the discussion we had at, about Juneteenth. Many people were thinking, yeah. oh, wow, I've never heard of Juneteenth. And I was raised in an African-American neighborhood where everybody knew about Juneteenth. But if you're raised outside of it, you might not know. And, uh, and many people said it, it didn't even dawn on them that there was no holiday that commemorated the end of slavery. They di didn't even dawn on them that they didn't know of one. And similarly, I, it didn't even dawn on me until this conversation with you right now that we really don't have something like what you mentioned in Tel Aviv, like a place where people who are adults can learn how to move around and access their bodies uh, so that they can use their bodies for the rest of their life. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> It'd be amazing. It, it was really? amazing. It was like, uh, you know, using your arm muscles, I remember. I, it was all kinds of musculature that, that was being utilized uh, at this uh, outdoor facility right, on, right at the pier, at the That's, old port. Yeah, yeah. You know, so, so many... Uh, yeah, that's, that's fantastic. I was going to say that so many of the, um, uh, the places that do have, uh, have activities available uh, to improve our physical functioning seem to ask us to engage in battle. Uh, so we're going against this piece of equipment or we're running so that we don't fly off of the equipment out the, through the back window. <laughs> so there's, always, there's, a, there's, there's a battle going on as opposed to um, something that's more loving and supportive. Uh, other cultures seem to be able to find a way to have things be it's to embrace who we are and, and use that and use our sensibilities uh, to, to, work, to, to work to improve ourselves as opposed to uh, doing things that basically beat you and say, okay, lift more or run faster or do whatever. It's, it's about embracing who you are and finding who you are and moving from there. And that's one, that's one thing I adore about Feldenkrais. I, I agree with you because the, the, the battle concept really makes it uh, a, a win or lose instead of a, an understanding and a collaboration between yourself and your inner feelings because we're, we're not really schooled until just recently really uh, to express our emotions and our feelings in, in, in ways that are acceptable and respectful of ourselves and others. Yeah, you are, I think, 100% right. And I, I, I know that there are some um, who still, now we're in 2020, um, who still feel that the educational model, the relationship that we have to education should be one where I, the teacher, I'm dictating and you are, you are aspiring to have what I know that, that, that I'm imparting. And, um, and this is a very different educational model, as you were saying, it's, a, it's about how do you find what's inside of you, honor that and evolve from there, which I think really creates much more interesting people. And um, I think if that were the basis of education throughout, not that you don't have to learn basic skills, but learn skills and then how do you become more you as opposed to you become what I, many people say is how do you become a more successful factory worker where you can uh, subjugate your feelings so that you can work nine to five or nine to nine and think of that's a satisfactory relationship with your life. Uh, yeah. 
It, it wasn't always like that. Yes, I know. Yeah. <laughs> it's evolved, and I hope that it's evolved far enough that the the pendulum will swing uh, towards a more balanced existence I for all that. of us. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm uh, waiting, but as they say, I am active. I am not going to sit there and pray my problems away. <laughs> I am going to be involved. So if it's uh, physical awareness, hey, you know, do physical awareness, whatever it is that makes you a better person. Right, and that ultimately wow. became uh, Michelle Feldenkrais' objective, um, that the way to change our nervous system and the way we interact on all levels in, in, in the world, the fastest way to get there is through our nervous system. Uh, therapy is great, and uh, education of other sorts, that, that, that's fine, whatever it does. But if I can get you to be more empowered by the way that you sit and what you can then imagine, um, uh, you, were, you were in the class the other night, the breathing lesson that we did with uh, somebody else in my program. Uh, and I came to me the idea that, uh, you know what, with Zoom, I can now bring in one of the foremost teachers in the method who I never would be able to do. And it never dawned on me until I opened myself up and I got quiet. The idea came to me, oh, this is someone I can invite. And so I invited him to participate in the festival and he wrote back instantly and said, I'd be honored to. This is someone on the West Coast. I'd never thought about doing it, but my mind opened because my spirit opened. That's right. And I think that that's the key is to let us be open to new possibilities because they lead to other new possibilities and better ways uh, to enjoy life and be part of our society. It's, it's a good thing. A real good thing. I think it's a great thing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, being open and, and aware and, and, uh, and living life to the fullest, that's, that's really what it's all about. And trying to bring that to as many people as possible. Truly. Right, and I think you're doing it. <laughs> I think you're doing it too, I think that. <laughs> but thank you, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're all trying. So, yeah. so I, I, I didn't think that this should be a, a long interview, right? Um, I think it's a, a natural uh, ebb and flow, it is what it is. And, uh, and uh, I think if there's any more information you want from me, I'm happy to give it. Uh, if there's anything else you feel I should say about the festival or about any of the other work I'm doing, uh, I'm happy to share it. Otherwise, I, I'm happy to go and make some lunch and have the adventure of figuring out what I'm going to have. And, uh, <laughs> that that, that, that okay. seems to be what I'm going to be doing, Frederick. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> the same thing. <laughs> well, we're we're human, right? I mean, we have we have uh, wants, needs, and uh, uh, there is so much in this world that we can participate in, and 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 and, 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 and sample like a smorgasbord. If it was open to everyone, it would be a, a real treat because. Life is uh, for not just surviving, but thriving. Absolutely, absolutely. And, uh, and um, uh, I, I, it was a phrase I used to use years ago that came to me um, about uh, difficult situations. How do you, uh, the, often it said, uh, how do you take lemon, uh, lemons and turn it into lemonade? And uh, my, my aspiration, is to take uh, lemons, turn them into uh, limoncello. <laughs> <laughs> and why not, you know, make life free. <laughs> I like that a lot. I I'll ask you one more question. Is there anyone in particular or any, you know, of uh, the, uh, I guess, nine different people, I guess, that will be uh, teaching with you or in conjunction 
Uh, any methodology before we leave that you'd like to discuss and why you think it's, it's important? Why, what made you choose some of the different teachers? Ah, okay, yes. Um, I'm responsible for all of them. I made the choices. Um, I thought all of them had something really interesting and different to bring to the festival. Two of them actually were students of Michelle Feldenkrais, and they've gone on to become directors of their own educational programs globally. So that's fantastic, and they have, they're really uh, important voices, I'd say, in the world of Feldenkrais. Um, someone else has uh, moved to the, Pacific, uh, to the Midwest with his family and uh, created a program globally where um, people can sign in at no charge, and, it's an ama and there are people who, who make contributions towards that. And he is somebody I mentored here in New York for several years, and he's absolutely extraordinary as a teacher. Um, I, I feel bad, like I might leave somebody out. But there are some younger teachers who I said, okay, no, they've got it. They really got a sense of what goes on in the teaching dynamic. And they do something that's different, something that I don't do. Uh, they, I, I have my way of teaching, um, but, and they have theirs. Uh, just like if you are Billie Holiday, you can listen to Ella Fitzgerald and she's doing something very different. And Oscar Peterson is doing something very different as well. Uh, you can be Billie Holiday and look at them and say, okay, I love that and I love that. They're different, they're a different voice. Uh, I'm doing the talk, as, I, as you know, on Friday of this week, uh, where I'm discussing Cole Porter. And in doing the research, I, I, I listen to what Billie Holiday does with the song, what Ella Fitzgerald does with the song, and what uh, Oscar Peterson does with the song, the same song. And it's spectacular and uh, totally different, totally distinct. And that's what the people who are coming to teach in the festival, that's what they bring. They're teaching Feldenkrais method, but they have their own voice, their own take. So uh, I'm hoping that people will take as many of the lessons as they can to take the week off and come to the Feldenkrais Festival. There's no charge, just sign in and have a grand old time. Okay, I, I think that says it all then. <laughs> I think we covered our, our, uh, covered our bases. I, I think that people should be excited to join the festival because it certainly, that's what hooked me, was sampling everything in May. All the different uh, the courses that I could join into. Uh, and certainly there's enough uh, time variation that many people can join easily. Uh, if you're working, you can come in the evening. Uh, if you're not working, or even if you're working and you're flexible, uh, you've got uh, midday hours and you've got evening hours. So it's really conducive to a lot of experimentation. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Right. All so, right. So I think it's great. So thank you for joining me. It's a pleasure. Sure. Uh, it's, I'll be there tonight. <laughs> fantastic. It's always a joy to talk to you. And uh, I will also be there tonight. Uh, one of the teachers in the festival is teaching this evening. So I'll be there for his class. And, uh, and, uh, and I will see you soon. See you soon, kiddo. All righty. Bye-bye. Bye. Felder Christ Festival, New York, another winner. Frederick Shang, Scott Frazier, the best. Two thumbs up. Today's festival was just fantastic. The idea of having two classes with a Q&A between was really enlightening. It, it gave pause not only to integrate what we had done, but to think ahead of what we will, will be doing in the next class. I, I thought the orientation was really brilliant. This was a great class. Frederick is just the best. And uh, I just, the parts that used to ache, somehow I walk out of here and they don't ache. Frederick is amazing. I recommend everybody to take this class because it's delicious. Ah, yes, and? I concur. All right. I feel 
altered. And I feel like there's a lot of information that I'm going to be processing. And I'm a movement specialist. Fabulous. So All right. It's real deep, and I can feel it percolating right to my bones. I love it. All righty. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> that was the best. Okay, taking any Feldenkrais class, especially with Frederick, is like bringing your body back home.